everyone, welcome back. Today we're talking about dating, Christian dating, why God's design for intimacy and in marriage is so important. So today with me is an amazing couple from our home church, Reality LA, Nathan and Stephanie Potter. Hey. Welcome you guys. Thank Hi. you. Thanks for having us. guys gave me permission to share about how you both fell into sexual sin before marriage. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to just dive into how that affected your marriage um, today. Sure. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I think that I definitely fell into kind of that rhythm of, well, I want to maintain my technical virginity, but, yes. you know, everything else is a little bit... Um, yeah, gray area. Because I was still maintaining this one specific thing, I think that I let a lot of other things slide. And I definitely see how coming into a marriage, that still affected our physical intimacy with each other within our marriage. But um, we were talking about how prior to marriage, every experience we had with each other created a relationship to that experience, right. that kind of intimacy. Um, him as a person. It was kind of defining and um, giving us an impression of each other and what it was like to be physical with one another. And so just like with anything, anytime I go out with somebody and have coffee with them, I'm getting to know them in a different way and I'm growing in that relationship. So coming into a marriage, I think that we're taking everything that we had experienced before our covenant with one another and we're bringing it into our covenant relationship. So all of that experience that we had was laced with so many things that God hadn't in intended. When we would kiss or when we would have these intimate interactions, we were also experiencing, I'll speak for myself, I was experiencing shame and guilt and um, insecurity or just all these other things that play into sex, sexual activity outside of a covenant. And then within marriage, I realized that, you know, there was complete freedom complete safety. I was given permission sure. and, and there's this, this new thing to work through of like it, it isn't excitement and enticement isn't really what God's intention that's yeah. not what it's supposed to be founded on. That gets to be a part of the experience mm -hmm. but I think we overemphasize that in sexual activity outside of covenant. So for Nathan I'll ask you you know what would you say to those couples that are out there thinking well, we love each other, we're getting married anyway, so what's, why can't we have sex? And what's the problem? And what are boundaries? Why do we need to have them in the first place? I would start with the, the question. I would respond with the question. I would start with the question, uh, what is your life about? Is your life as a follower of Jesus about your fulfillment of desire? Or is it about um, fulfillment of Christ and the way he created the world and the kingdom that he's called you into and the identity he's now called you to. Right. Um, you know, Colossians 3 says, don't set your mind on the things below, but above mm -hmm. where Christ is and, uh, and when Christ who is your life. So for followers of Jesus, Jesus is our life. Mm -hmm. So the question really comes back to what is your life about? Are you trying to create a, the good life that where all of your desires are filled and all your fantasies are fulfilled and everything's amazing all the time? Yeah. Or are you seeking the good life in Christ, mm -hmm. um, which is a life that's laid down, mm -hmm. a life that is laid down and surrendered to Him, yeah. a life that's laid down for the sake of other people. And the way He has designed sex, and he, let's not get it twisted, like He designed sex. Yes. And it is good. It is like there's a reason it feels good and it's fun. It's because mm -hmm. He designed it as a physical expression of a holistic in intimacy. And because it is a physical expression of a holistic intimacy, I would say, hold on. If you have not committed the whole of yourself, intellectually, emotionally, financially, spatially, um, and, and when I say committed, I don't mean you're my girlfriend, I mean I choose to choose you every day for the rest of my life, even when I don't feel like it. Until you have formalized and solidified that, you do not have a holistic union. Amen. And therefore, this physical expression of holistic intimacy and union, yeah. that's not yours. Right, right. I love earlier you shared how sex outside marriage often is due to the selfish need of you know, we have this desire for sex, so we are gonna go find someone who can fulfill that physically, 
without committing their whole life. So we're only giving one part of a union when it's supposed to all come together. Mm -hmm. So could you elaborate more of where that was coming from? And mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually was talking to a friend of mine a few weeks ago now, and he said that he had gone on a date with a young woman, and a few days later, she called him and she was like, hey, why don't you like me? And he was like, what are you talking about? Of course I like you. And she said, well, you didn't, when we went to the movie, you didn't put your arm around me. Mm -hmm. And when we were on a walk, you didn't hold my hand. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even try. Mm -hmm. And his response was, your body is not mine. Amen. I don't wow. get to assert my desire onto you. Wow. And I think that's, that's a big thing, because often that, um, what you just said, that, that selfish desire for physical intimacy, for sexual gratification. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes what that's masking is underneath a desire to be loved. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've conditioned ourselves that if I'm not getting kissed, I don't know if I'm loved. Mm -hmm. if, I, if, if you're not putting your arm around me, I don't know if you love me. Mm -hmm. And we miss out in this particular case, my friend's story, she missed out on the fact that he picked her up and walked to the door. He paid for the movie. He asked her out in the first place. He's expressed that he likes her and he keeps asking her questions about her life. He has expressed all that in so many other ways and she missed him because she couldn't see it for what it was. She needed that extra physical piece. So we can, we can learn more about, about how to recognize holistic enjoyment of one another for sure. But that uh, Genesis 3 says, or Genesis 2 rather, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And that cleaving is that holistic union, that oneness. And until that happens, her body does not belong to me. And that's the thing I didn't realize. I didn't know what to make of all of that. And, and so I overstepped a lot of boundaries. But in reality, what I needed to recognize was until we are married, her body belongs to Jesus. It is not for me to assert my will upon. It's not for me to gratify myself with. It's hers and Christ's. Right. And it matters mm. that you choose this moment to yeah. serve your God. Um, what matters is that in your heart, you have a relationship to Jesus mm. and you are seeking and desiring to serve Jesus with your whole life. Wow. And so, really the the physical things are just flags they're just these things that are popping up and happening according to what's happening inside your heart yeah. and internally god is calling you near to him mm -hmm. and it's never too late to draw near to jesus mm. so whether you've been in sexual sin for years and you're trying to pull yourself out of it or whether you're getting married next week and you're thinking right. what's the point like there is always a point in taking this moment to serve your God. One of the best advices I got when I was Christian dating was to not commit to a man like a wife when you're not a wife. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're sleeping together, when you're living together, it often feels like you're auditioning to be someone's wife. Mm -hmm. And after a year, you're like, where's my ring? And it's almost, why would the guy even feel a need to do that if you're already kind of giving right. him all the selfish needs that he wants? Mm -hmm. So what would you say to the couple who is either already living together and sleeping together or contemplating moving towards that direction. Yeah. Um, to the men, I would say a few things. One, uh, when you cross those lines, that guilt, that shame that you're feeling, I would spare you that. I would have you live free of that in Christ. And the way to live free of that in Christ is to not cross that boundary. Uh, the other thing I would say is, what you do with your body says something about who you believe God is. You are made in His image. So when you gratify your body out of your own desire, you're saying you do not believe that He can sustain and satisfy you. When you assert your will onto another person's body, you are saying that they do not deserve the dignity of an Im image bearer of God, the respect that that demands. And that leads me into the third thing I would say. There's this idea of like, you gotta test drive the car before you buy it. She's not a car. <laughs> She's not a car. She is an image bearer of God. She is the crowning achievement of God's creation. God didn't say it was very good until he made woman. She is the pinnacle of everything he's created. 
And therefore, she is to be respected. She is to be protected. She is to be adored. She is to be encouraged and empowered. She is not ours to do with what we will. And so as men, we have a responsibility to lead the way in that. And the, the one thing I would, I would add is in the moments where it's like, this is hard, it's impossible. Maybe some people are listening to us and they're like, that is too hard for me to do. I would just point back to Jesus bought his bride and he's waiting. Yeah. He knows what that is to wait yes. for the one that's been promised to you. So he can give you strength in that. Thank you guys so much for sharing all that. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, go ahead and hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in a few weeks. It is shimmer. Glitter. I know. <laughs> mm. How's this? Do you need more thigh? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Sorry. I'm sweating. I think she nailed that. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> First try. Okay.